Magandang araw sa lahat! Today, we shall talk about utilitarianism. But let me start with a story. Immediately after the first case of COVID-19 in the Philippines was recorded, the government implemented the enhanced community quarantine as a temporary measure of imposing stringent limitations on the movement and transportation of people, strict regulations of operating industries, provision of food and essential services, and heightened presence of uniformed personnel to enforce community quarantine protocols. This response, therefore, restricted the mobility of the people to prevent the spread of the virus for the safety of the community at large. After three months, a total of 177,540 persons were reported accosted. 52,535 were actually detained by state officials for defying quarantine protocols. For people who are economically better situated, ECQ is the story of the spread of the virus. But for the vulnerable ones, like the total of 2.1 Filipinos who experienced self-reported hunger even before the pandemic in 2019 by SWS 2020 survey, the main issue is being able to go out to provide food on the table. Put simply, these people who were apprehended, accosted, had to find ways of making a living despite the ECQ and the threat of the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has placed them in a dilemma of having to choose between one following ECQ restrictions for the containment of the virus for the health safety of the whole country, which includes their families, and having to go out of their homes that they may live. The ethos of ECQ as a pandemic response is difficult to assess. Most of the time, we compare the costs and benefits of each alternative, and whichever has the greater net benefit becomes the best alternative. Well, this approach may be the contemporary version of the moral theory called utilitarianism. The classical formulation of the utilitarian moral theory is found in the writings of Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. John Stuart Mill is the son of James Mill, who was an associate of Bentham, an English philosopher, jurist, and a political reformer widely known as the founder of utilitarianism. By the time that J.S. Mill was 20, he had read Bentham and became an avid follower of his philosophy. His work titled Utilitarianism provides the basic tenets of the utilitarian theory. So what is utilitarianism? Utilitarianism as a moral principle is often referred to as the principle of utility. The morally best or better alternative is that which produces the greatest or the greater net utility, where utility is defined in terms of happiness or pleasure. We also say utilitarianism is the greatest happiness principle. It requires that we do that which produces the greatest amount of happiness for the greatest number of people. Utilitarianism advances the teleological or consequential approach in ethics. Teleological from the term telos, which means end, the end or the goal of actions. So in evaluating the actions or practices, utilitarianism considers the results or the consequences of the action. Ibig sabihin, ang pagtaya ng pagiging tama o mali ng isang kilos ay nakasalalay sa konsekwensya kinahihinatnan lahat yon o resulta ng aksyon sa halip na sa karakter ng taong kumikilos o sa usapin ng pagtalima sa isang obligasyon o ginagawa ba ito dahil lamang may obligasyon or duty. Ang ganitong konsekwensyalistang balangkas o consequentialist framework ay makikita sa teorya ng utilitarianismo. According to John Stuart Mill, all actions are for the sake of some end. It seems natural to suppose that and must take their whole character and color from the end to which they are subservient, from utilitarianism. Ang pahayag na all action is for the sake of some end ay nagbibigay diin sa kahalagahang pang-etika ng mga layon o kinahihinatnan kung saan nakatoon ang isang gawain. Halimbawa, magbalik tayo sa usapin ng pandemya. Ligtas na ipagpalagay na maganda ang layuni ng Social Amelioration Program o ang SAP na ipinamahagi noong panahon ng ECQ. Naglalayon ito na makapagbigay ng pansamantalang tulong pinansyal habang hindi pa nakalalabas ang mga tao upang makapaghanap buhay. 
Ngunit ano ang nangyari? Dahil sa hindi naging maayos ang paraan ng distribusyon, nagkadami at nagkagulo ang mga tao sa barangay hall, kaya hindi na rin nasunod ang mga protocol gaya ng social distancing. Sa huli, ay maaaring nakadagdag pa ito sa pagkalat ng virus na siyang iniiwasan. Dagdag pa ang ilang namatay dahil sa init habang matagal na nakapila upang mabigyan ng sap. Mula sa utilitarianismong pagdulog, ang susuriin dito ay kung ano ang naging resulta ng SAP. Hindi ang intensyon ng pamamahagi nito o ang organikong karakter ng programa. Maaaring taliwas ito sa karaniwang paniniwala halimbawa na ang kabutihan o pagiging tama ay maaaring ayon sa uri o katangi ang taglay ng isang gawain. O yung sinasabi natin na there are actions that may be good in themselves. Halimbawa, Pagsasakripisyo ng panahon, ng pagod, ng buhay ng mga medical frontliners sa kasagsagan ng pandemya ay itinuturing na mabuti at dapat na parangalan dahil ang pagsasakripisyo ay pagkilos na itinuturing na mabuti sa kanyang sarili, an action that is good in itself. Dahil wari bagang nakasalalay ito sa pagpapakasakit, nagaalay sila ng kanilang serbisyo at buhay upang mailigtas ang mga nagpositibo sa COVID-19. Sa ganitong pagtanto, Tama ang pagsasakripisyo ng mga medical frontliners kahit ano pa man ang maging resulta ng kanilang ginagawa. Sa pananaw ng utilitarianismo, hindi tama na sabihing tama ang pagsasakripisyo dahil lamang ito ay pagpapakasakit o pagbabahagi ng sarili sa iba kung kaya ito ay isang espesyal na uri ng kilos. Bagkus, kung mahalaga man ito, ang sakripisyo ay dapat nakasalalay sa pagtatasa kung ito ay nakadaragdag sa kaligayahan na maibubunga ng pagpapakasakit. The utilitarian morality refuses to admit that the sacrifice is itself good. A sacrifice which does not increase or tends to increase the sum total of happiness, utilitarianism considers it as wasted. So according to utilitarianism, therefore, We ought to consider which action or practice has or is likely to have the best results or consequences. The next question is, what sort of consequence do we consider as good? Is it wealth? Is it power or fame? Classical utilitarianism holds that pleasure or happiness is the good that needs to be attained or produced. Wealth, power, and fame may be good to the extent that they produce pleasure or happiness. Kwento ulit. May isang estudyante daw na kung bakit palagi ay nasa aklatan. Nung tinanong siya kung bakit palagi nagpupunta sa aklatan, ang sabi niya, dahil gusto niya makapag-aral ng mabuti. At nang tanungin muli, bakit? Upang makakuha ng mataas na grado. Bakit? Upang makapasok sa kolehyo ng medisina. Bakit? Para maging doktor. At nung tinanong muli, eh, bakit gusto mo maging doktor? Upang kumita ng maraming pera at mabili ang maraming bagay na gusto niyang bilin. Muli, bakit? Gusto niyang bilin ang mga ito, aniya, dahil gusto niyang maging masaya o maligaya. Tanungin siya sa huli kung bakit gusto niyang maging masaya, natigilan ang estudyante. Wala siyang maisagot. Ano nga kaya ang maaaring sagot sa tanong na bakit gusto mong lumigaya? Maaaring hanggang doon lang ang abot ng kanyang isip, kaya't wala siyang maisip na iba pang dahilan. Ngunit sa isang interpretasyon, hindi nga kaya tunay na nakatuon sa pagtatamo ng kaligayahan ang anumang ating ginagawa? Ibig sabihin, wala ng ibang pakay na higit pa rito, bagkos kundi ang pagkakamit ng kaligayahan. Sa mga unang tanong, ang mga bagay na pinahahalagahan niya tulad ng pag-aaral ng mabuti, pagkuha ng mataas na marka, pagiging doktor, pagkita ng maraming pera ay mahalaga dahil sila ay mga instrumento o paraan upang matamo ang isang bagay, ang kaligayahan. Maaring sabihin na ang kanilang halaga ay instrumental. Ibig sabihin, pinapahalagahan sila dahil sa inaasahang magiging bunga o kahihinatnan nila. Ang kaligayahan o happiness na pinapahalagahan dahil sa kaligayahan, sa kanyang sarili for its own sake, at hindi dahil sa iba pang bagay na nais na matamo, ay may likas o intrinsikong halaga. Sa usaping ito, sinasabi ni J.S. Mill na ang kaligayahan, pleasure o pag-iwas sa nakasasakit ang siyang pangkalahatang tunguhin o hinahangad ng tao dahil sa likas o intrinsikong halaga nito. Kung kaya, 
Ang panukatan ng halaga ng kilos tao ay ang kaligayahan. Ito ay kung ang tawagin ay pleasure utilitarianism o utilitarianismong pangkaligayahan. Pleasure and freedom from pain are the only things desirable as ends. And all desirable things are desirable either for the pleasure inherent in themselves or as a means to the promotion of pleasure and prevention of pain. Mula pa rin sa utilitarianism. So utilitarianism is the creed that accepts the foundation of morals, utility, or the greatest happiness principle. Holds that actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness and wrong as they tend to produce the reverse of happiness. And by happiness is intended pleasure and the absence of pain, and by unhappiness, pain and the privation of pleasure. So according to the greatest happiness principle or the principle of utility, there is a need for you know, a moral calculus of all these pleasurable experiences. We need to measure, count, weigh, and compare pleasurable experiences that are likely to be produced by various alternative actions in order to know which is best. Both Bentham and Mill are in agreement that the more pleasure or happiness, the better. Both are used interchangeably, pleasure and happiness, and are said to refer to a kind of psychic state of satisfaction. Calculating the greatest amount of pleasure or happiness. Hence, there is a need to calculate the greatest amount of pleasure or happiness. But how? One, we can assess how much overall pleasure minus the pain to how many people may be produced by a certain action. For example, if Act A makes me happy and two people happy and Act B makes one unhappy but four others happy, then Act B is better choice than Act A by greater overall pleasure minus the pain. Two, in calculating the greatest happiness or pleasure, we can also evaluate the intensity of pleasure and how long it lasts. Again, if Act A, for example, gives 40 people each mild pleasure, like two, approximately two, for example, in the scale of one to ten for seven days, so if we make some, you know, a little moral calculus there, so 40 people times like 2 in the scale of 1 to 10 times 2, that gives us 80 like degrees of pleasure for 7 days. Now, Act B gives 10 people each intense pleasure. So in the scale of 1 to 10, it's 10, this time for 9 days. So again, another moral calculation there, around 10 to 10 degrees of pleasure, uh, that would be around 100 for 9 days. Then, what do we say? Act B is a better choice because the pleasure in Act B is more intense and long-lasting. For my daughter who loves playing volleyball, for example, the pleasure of hitting the ball may be more intense than the pleasure of watching Netflix. Hence, this should count in the pleasure calculus. Third, fruitfulness is another aspect of the pleasure experience. The fruitfulness of the experience of pleasure depends on whether the experience of pleasure enables one to experience similar or other pleasures in the future. For example, athletes bear the pain of endless conditioning and training, although for most of them, the experience remains to be pleasurable, even though the pain is inevitable. But the pain today may be the only way for them to experience greater and more intense pleasure in the future. They gain strength and athleticism to enable them to win games and tournaments. That would provide greater and more intense pleasure in the future. Right? And so forth. Finally, the likelihood that the desired outcome will occur. Meaning, before attempting to decide between two possible options, we need to assess the likely results of each before comparing the net utility. Halimbawa ulit. If my daughter joins the tryouts for the UP Women's Volleyball Team, she may have like 16 weeks a semester no, of pleasure, but she may only have 40% chance of making it because of her height. So again, another you know, moral calculation around 16 weeks at like 40%, 0.4. No? So around 6.4 weeks of pleasure. 
But if my daughter joins the tryouts for the UP Volleyball Club, she may only have like around eight weeks of pleasure, but she has like 90% chance of making it. So again, doing the calculation, eight weeks at 0.9, the 90%, you, you'll, she'll have around 7.2 weeks of pleasure. Ceteris paribus, all else being equal, it would be preferable for my daughter to join the tryouts for the UPVC than the UPWVT. So in the calculation of the greatest amount of pleasure, utilitarians may have to consider the total amount of pleasure minus the pain, the intensity, duration, fruitfulness, and likelihood of producing the desired consequences. Well, again, while both Bentham and Mill would agree that the more pleasure or happiness, the better, Bentham considers only the quantity of pleasure or happiness that results from the actions. So he claims the quantity of pleasure being equal, push pin, which is a game, is as good as poetry. Ibig sabihin, kung pareho ang kantidad, the quantity o dami ng pleasure na nakukuha sa pag-tiktok halimbawa at sa pagbabasa ng Republic ni Plato, ang intellectual pleasure na nakukuha sa pagbabasa kay Plato ay hindi nagiging mas mabuti kumpara sa simpleng pleasure na nakukuha sa pagtitiktok. J.S. Mill, however, believed that the quality of pleasure should also count. For Mill, some pleasures like intellectual pleasures are more valuable in themselves than purely sensual pleasures and should therefore factor in the calculation of the greatest amount of happiness. Bilang patunay aniya, kung tatanungin ang mga tao na nakaranas ng iba't ibang klase ng pleasure, kung nanaisin ba nilang mabuhay na parang tao sa kabila ng maraming kabiguan at sakit o mabuhay na parang hayop na ang karanasan ay punong-puno ng pleasure bagamat ang lahat ay pawang sensual pleasure, naniniwala siya na mas pipiliin nilang maging tao kaysa hayop. They would prefer to be human being dissatisfied than a pig satisfied. Narinig niyo na siguro yan. Or better to be Socrates dissatisfied than a pig. A fool satisfied. The point is that the only reason why we would prefer a life of fewer net pleasure over the life of a pig with greater total amount of pleasure is because we value something other than the amount of pleasures. We value the kind of pleasure as well. Yan ang sasabi ni Mill. Hindi lama ang kantidad kundi ang kalidad ng kaligayahan ang ating dapat pahalagahan para kay Mill. One popular criticism against utilitarianism is on the justification of any action as long as it results in better consequences, namely, greater happiness than other available action. The utilitarian framework may therefore justify cheating, lying, stealing, or breaking promises if doing so will result in the maximization of pleasure or happiness. Some scholars say that this could be the reason for the development of the second version called rule utilitarianism. What we have been discussing is act utilitarianism. It emphasizes the consequences of a particular action A under a particular circumstances C. So act utilitarianism weighs the consequences of doing something in a given situation alone or the consequences of each act separately. Rule utilitarianism, on the other hand, holds that we need to consider the consequences of the act performed as a general practice or as a rule. So in assessing the rightness or wrongness of doing Act A under circumstances C, we need to consider the consequences of everyone's doing A as a rule whenever circumstances of the kind C arise. Did you get it? In making moral judgments, a rule utilitarian ought to ask, if it were a rule that Act A ought to be done given circumstance C, what would be the, past, the probable consequences? Halimbawa, sa kaso ng pagbibigay ng bakuna para sa COVID, dahil hindi pa sapat para sa lahat ang supply ng bakuna, magsisinungaling ka at sasabihin mong ikaw ay may comorbidity, high blood po ako, may diabetes po ako, upang mauna ka na mabigyan nito. Ipagpalagay, Ipagpalagay na mas maraming kaligayahan ang iyong matatamo kapag ginawa mo ang pagsisinungaling. 
maraming umaasa sa iyo, malayo mong magagaw ang mga nais mong gawin dahil may protection na etc. at hindi ka mahuhuli. Maaaring sa act utilitarianism ay tama ang ginawa mo. Pagdating sa rule utilitarianism, maaari mo ngayon itanong kung ang lahat ay magsisinungaling na sila ay may comorbidity upang makauna sa pagpapabakuna. Ano nga aring maging resulta o, o konsekwensya nito? Magdudulot pa rin kaya ito ng mas mar maraming kaligayahan para sa mas maraming tao? There were reactions, of course, that rule utilitarianism is no better than act utilitarianism for it eventually dissipates to act utilitarianism. Well, which form of utilitarianism is better may be a matter of dispute. But I hope that I have made the difference clear enough. So let us now check the other objections to utilitarianism. One major objection against pleasure utilitarianism lies in the observation that human actions may have other ultimate ends other than the promotion of pleasure and avoidance of pain. Sinasabi lang nito na baka may iba pang ultimong layunin bukod sa kaligayahan ang pagkilos ng tao. Ipinaaalala ng pilosopong si A.G. Ayer na may iba't ibang naging layon bukod sa pagtatamasa ng kaligayahan sa mga pangkaraniwang gawain. Halimbawa ay ang pagtatamasa ng salapi, kapangyarihan, katanyagan at iba pa. Ngunit bilang tugon ni Mill, sinasabi niya na maging totoo man na hinahangad na mata mo ang mga ito, ang ultimong mithiin pa rin ay ang kaligayahan. na one Basic and common reaction in calculating the greatest amount of happiness required by utilitarianism is the complexity of doing it. While in our discussion earlier, some approximate units were provided in measuring pleasure and pain, the intensity, duration, likelihood, etc., calculating the greatest amount of happiness remains difficult. Paano nga ba susukatin at hanggang saan ba susukatin ang kabutihang resulta ng isang pagkilos? Kung ang tama ay ang pagkilos na makapaghatid ng pinakamaraming kasiyahan, paano nga ba susukatin ang ligaya? Paano titimbangin ang kabutihan na dulot ng kontra sa pasakit na maaring idulot? Sinusukat ngunit paano? Paano kung kulang? No? Ito ay isa sa mga reaksyon uh, against utilitarianism. Pangatlo, Whose happiness are we calculating? Kaninong kaligayahan ba ang pinag-uusapan natin sa, sa greatest or maximization of pleasure or happiness? Ang pagtatamasa ba ng kinahinatnan ng pagkilos ay magsasaalang-alang ng kaligayahan lamang ng taong kumikilos o ng lahat ng maaaring maapektuhan nito? Maaaring hindi na ito maituring na teorya sa etika sapagkat hindi na nito na isa sa alang-alang ang panlipunang kahulugan na nagsisilbing batayan para sa etikal na ugnayan. Kung ang pagtatasa naman ng kahihinat na ng pagkilos ay magsasaalang-alang no, lahat ng may interes sa pagkilos, lahat ng kakapakan ng maaaring maapektuhan no, ng pagkilos, hindi pa rin malinaw kung sino ba ang bubuo sa moral na komunidad. Tao lang ba? Kasama ba ang hayop? Papano ang kapaligiran? Ang ibang bagay na walang buhay at iba pa. Pang-apat, tinatanong din, is individual happiness no longer important? Are we not distributing happiness? Tandaan natin, hinahanap natin dito yung greatest happiness of the greatest number, di ba? Maaring ito ay usapin ng pamamahagi ng kapakinabangan o kaligayahan. Kaugnay pa rin sa mga punto sa ikalawa at ikatlo. Paano kung ang isang bagay ay makapagbibigay ng lubos na kaligayahan sa isang tao lamang at ang kanyang matatamong kaligayahan ay higit pa sa kabuuan kaligayahan na maaasahang matamo ng lima pa? Wala bang halaga na maiuukol sa isang gawaing makapagbibigay ng kaligayahan sa mas nakararami? Ibig sabihin na ibabahagi ang kaligayahan sa ibang tao bagamat sa pangkabuang pagkwenta ay mas hihigitan ito ng para sa iisa lamang. Tinatanong natin, how do we really compare happiness or pleasure? Mahalaga ring matukoy ang kakulangan sa kung paano gagawin ang paghahambing sa mga karanasan na kinapapalooban ng kaligayahan o paghihirap. Madaling sabihin na para sa akin, mas nakapagbibigay ng kaligayahan ang pakikipag-usap sa aking mga estudyante kaysa sa paglalaro ng volleyball. Ngunit sigurado akong hindi ganito ang kasiyahang natatamon ng aking anak sa tuwing hahampas siya ng bola. Sa madaling sabi, 
Paano susukatin ang kaligayahan at sakit na maaring mata mo ng iba't ibang tao sa moral na komunidad kung maaaring iba't iba ang kasiyahang natatamo bunga ng magkamukhang gawain? At sa huli, humans are not simply receptacles of pleasure and pain. Ito yung karaniwa nating naririnig kaugnay sa nakikita nilang problema ng utilitarianismo. No, humans are not simply receptacles of pleasure and pain. Sa ganitong pagdulog ng utilitarianismo, ang tao ay parang ituturing bilang lalagyan o sisidlan lamang ng kaligayahan o sakit. Ang kanyang intensyon ay nababaliwala at nagsisilbing lalagyan lamang ng kasiyahan o sakit ang taong kumikilos. Sa pagkakataong ito, dapat maunawaan na ang pagkilos ng tao ay hindi lamang galaw ng katawan. Ito ay tinitingnan na may etikal na karakter dahil sa intensyon na nakapaloob dito. Hindi basta nangyayari ang kilos. Ito ay sinasadyang gawin ng taong mayroong intensyon. Maaari pa ngang ipagpalagay na maituturing lamang na kilos tao ang kilos kung ito ay sinasadyang gawin. Kung kaya sa pagbibigay ng buong pansin sa resulta ng kilos, Tila baga na ipagpapalagay na maaring mangyari ang isang pagkilos kahit walang taong kumikilos. Gayun din, sa ganitong punto, ang karakter ng taong kumikilos ay nawawalang halaga kung hindi rin naman ito naapektuhan ang resulta. These were the objections raised against the tenets of utilitarianism. But we cannot deny that utilitarianism has become a highly influential ethical theory. From the classical formulation of Bentham and Mill, other consequentialist moral theories were already developed. But just like any other ethical theory, it has its challenges. Despite all this, I'm certain that at one point, you have made an ethical decision that is based on these utilitarian principles without realizing that you are stepping on utilitarian grounds. <laughs>